Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today we're going to look at the ligaments of the human female pelvis. I did an earlier video where I talk about the bony landmarks, but on this series I want to try to specify the main ligaments associated with the pelvis, the hip, and obviously the SI joint and the pubic symphysis. I think we'll start on the anterior aspect. So let's look at um, one of the main ligaments, and it's known as the inguinal or the inguinal ligament. And it'll go from the anterior superior iliac spine, it comes down to the pubic tubercle. So this is the inguinal ligament. And basically it almost like separates the lower from the upper. So if you have a, a herniation along this sort of area, it's known as an inguinal, below it will be femoral and above it will be abdominal. If you notice on this particular case, we've got another ligament inferior to the inguinal ligament, it's called the lucerna and it connects this ligament to the pectineal ligament just below it here. So this is the inguinal, this is the lucina one, and then this is the pectineal. There is a space of the femoral ring here, and then directly through the space will be where the, the artery, the femoral artery will go through, and also the returning vein. The nerve will pass here, where the psoas is located, and then iliacus will be in this sort of area, and then in this little corner, will be where the nerve called the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve will penetrate and will supply the sensation to the lateral side of the leg. This is the pubic symphysis and there is an articular disc in between. This is the arcuate ligament just here and then we have the superior pubic symphysis ligament directly above it. On the hip side we have got the inverted Y which is called the iliofemoral ligament and we have the majority of it coming down. We also have the, the pubofemoral ligament coming down, so the pubofemoral here, and then we have the ischio, so the ischium femoral ligament just behind here. Staying on the anterior surface, we've got this sort of transverse ligament of the acetabula coming down, part of the hip joint. And then coming on to the sacroiliac joint, we've got the anterior sacroiliac ligaments either side. This ligament here is actually part of the spine and the sacrum, so it's part of the anterior longitudinal ligament as it comes down. And then you can see the anterior surface, this will be the iliolumbar ligament, think of the name ilium to the lumbar, and this is the L5 transverse process and then the iliolumbar ligament has five bands, but we can only see three in this one. So we've got one, two, three directly here. And you can see this one connects to the, the iliac crest along this area. That's the main ones on the anterior surface. Let's turn over and let's look at the posterior surface. The main one, which is also known as the key ligament, which will go from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity, will be the sacrotuberous ligament here. And there are four muscles which attach to this. The bicep femoris is a continuation. The gluteus maximus attaches here. And according to Vleeman, he did a study on 15 cadavers. And every single one of them had an attachment of the gluteus maximus to the sacrotuberous ligament. The multifidi fascially attaches. And so does the piriformis because that will come underneath here and fill the space. Adjacent with the sacrotuberous is the sacrospinous from the spine of the ischium here to the corner of the sacrum. So that's the sacrospinous. This forms the greater sciatic foramen and then this forms the lesser sciatic foramen here. We've got the sac sacrococcygeal ligaments coming down. This is the supraspinous of the continuation. This will be for the, the sacral spines along here. We've got the deep interosseous ligaments along this area and also known as the, the posterior sacroiliac will cross, but these are the deeper ones in this area here. We've got the dorsal sacroiliac ligament coming down, also known as the long dorsal ligament. So we've got the dorsal ligament, also known as the long dorsal ligament coming down. And then the sacrotuberous blends in with this ligament, but these two oppose each other. Because if the sacrum is, say, counter-nutated, gone backwards, then in theory, this ligament's more on stretch, whereas the sacrotuberous is more relatively lax. And vice versa, if the sacrum's gone forward, then as in in nutation, then this ligament will become stretched 
and then this ligament becomes relatively lax. Also the same goes with movement of the innominate, but that'll be in, a, in another talk. This is the iliolumbar ligament here, and you can see it attaches to the transverse process of the lumbar vertebra. This one also connects to the quadratus lumborum. And I think we've covered the majority of the ligaments of the pelvis. I hope you enjoyed my talk on the anatomy series of the ligaments of the human female pelvis.